Welcome to our first series of exercise tutorials in this course. In this tutorial, we're going to practice working with forms, creating a component pattern, and we're going to learn how to suppress or unsuppress components in an assembly. Before we get rolling, let's open up my rule cube size. Here are some parameters that belong to the component level. Let's see what happens when I change a user parameter name. Let's click OK. Open user parameters. Let's rename the length parameter. I'll call it L2. Click done and let's double click on cube size to open it up. As you can see now these lines of code are scrambled. If this didn't happen on your end, it means that Autodesk has probably already fixed this glitch in iLogic. But I just wanted to bring that up in case you were confused by that. Since we're working with a cube, in this tutorial we're going to start by making all sides of the cube controlled by a single parameter. Let's click OK and click on Parameters to open up the Parameters window. Let's rename Length2 to, to Red underscore Cube underscore Dimension. This parameter I'm going to call blue underscore cube underscore dimension. And let's click done. Now let's go and fix our rule. Double click on cube size to open it for editing. First, I'll delete these three lines of codes. Go to the options tab. Under parameter capture syntax, check use component name. Back to the Model tab, expand the Blue Cubes node, click Model Parameters. We're going to use Parameter Functions. Double click on our parameter name. Let's bring in another one. And one more, the Height Parameter. Now after each, Space equals Space. Let's go to User Parameters at the Assembly level. Here, every side of the cube is equal to the Blue Cubes dimension. So we're going to paste this after each. And one more here, paste again. All right, let's do the same with the red cube. Copy and paste. And paste it here. And one more. Let's click OK. Let's make some modifications to our form. Right click and edit. First, let's delete the height parameter. Select and just press delete on your keyboard. Now let's bring in a group, just drag it over. Drop it here. Drag and drop the red and blue cubes dimensions inside that group. So very easy to use. Let's rename the group with a slow click, cube dimension. Let's change the parameters label as well. I'll call this blue cube. Actually, let me call it Cube Dimension. Now I'll copy that, and I will paste it here. Select the Blue Cube Dimension parameter. Under Control Type, let's use Text Box. Next, let's add a tab to our group. I'll drag the tab group up here and drag up another tab. We'll drag the parameters inside the tab. Let's rename the tab. We'll call this one blue. And the second one we'll call red. Tab to register those changes. Down below we can change the properties of the group and the tab. The same way for image parameters and so on. Tooltip, fonts, etc. So pretty much the same options are available for groups as well. OK, we made our changes. Let's see how it works. Let's click OK to close the form editor. Click on Parameters Control. Here's our form. Let's make the blue cube 20 millimeters. And go to the red tab. Let's make the cube dimension 25. 
Oops, I forgot to change the properties of the text box. Let's go back and edit the form. Select the red cube parameter. We need to switch the read only property to false. That way I can make changes to the value. Let's try this again. Change to 20 millimeters for the blue cube and 25 millimeters for the red cube. Tab to register. Apply. And let's adjust the hole diameter now. OK. Now I know I've harped on this before, but I've got to say it again because it's important. Do check your rules and forms frequently, even if you haven't changed a particular rule. In my case, I didn't make any changes to the hole diameter rule but changes to one rule or one form can affect rules and forms that you didn't even touch. And it can be very frustrating, especially if you're a beginner, to figure out why a rule is crashing when you've been making modifications to one rule, but then some other rule that you didn't even touch gives you a runtime error. This concludes the first part of this exercise. In our next exercise, we're going to create a component pattern. We'll learn how to incorporate the component pattern right into the form. We'll see you back in a moment.